This is Dolany TV, friends. We need to talk about Jack Campbell again. Yeah, uh, we're right back there. A very rough game out for Jack Campbell, and it seems every time Jack Campbell has started a game in the past two months, we've had to sit down and have that discussion. We need to talk about Jack Campbell. And I think the most simple thing that everyone's going to say, oh, this is eight minutes of ranting about how terrible of an Edmonton Oilers goaltender Jack Campbell has turned into be. My friends, it is not. I can guarantee you that because there is a ton to kind of tell us that Jack Campbell should not just be written off because of one season and 33 games that haven't quite gone his way. But before we get there, friends, if you're new to the channel, I'd like you to consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolany TV. Trying to hit 11,500 by AM Friday next week, March 31st. So would love to have your support on that. And obviously you'll find out why if you stay tuned for the live streams. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you also hit that like button. As well as if you're returning to the channel. Bing, bang, boom. Housekeeping notes done. Nice and simple this evening. All right, let's get to Jack Campbell. Friends, what do we know? A seven-goal, four-goal victory last night in a 5-4 overtime victory for the Edmonton Oilers over top of the San Jose Sharks. Okay, the baseline metric right there. We got the win. That's all that matters. That is fantastic. We now go to bring up this stat pack here on Jack Campbell. And I'm just going to uh, miniaturize that a little bit so as you can kind of see me. And I'm going to read off that. And I'm going to just kind of comb over here a little bit and we'll be good to go. Sorry, I haven't practiced this beforehand. Pardon me. But Jack Campbell, here's the thing. You look at these stats and you tell me where Jack Campbell is going to be an absolutely terrible goaltender the rest of his career because of 33 games played as an Edmonton Oilers, right? Jack Campbell over the course of his career has 135 games played for a team not named the Edmonton Oilers, yet... We as Oilers fans on year one of a five-year deal are willing to write off the guy that was brought in to be our starter this season because of 33 games, right? A goaltender never plays all 82. A goaltender doesn't even nowadays play 65 regularly in a season. But Jack Campbell, who's 18 wins, 9 losses, and 4 overtime extra time losses in there with a points, right, 22 points games with points out of 31 starts that ain't a bad situation for Jack Campbell he has been despite being absolutely abysmal in net in terms of giving up goals and a save percentage he has been functional in the Oilers net if you have a goalie getting you 22 uh, games out of 31 starts with points so just to give you an idea of what that breaks down to that is a 70 point well 71 percent points percentage for the Edmonton Oilers over the course of an 82 game season. I know I wrote all that stat off a few seconds ago with what I said about goaltenders, but 71 point percent points percentage for Jack Campbell this season, despite the numbers we're about to get into here, 882 save percentage and a 357 goals percentage. I got to sneeze. Give you a second to chew on that. And maybe I don't. We'll, uh, we'll try and battle through, but you look at this, I guess where I'm talking about there is hope yet for Jack Campbell is in a 31-game season between, uh, or sorry, a 26-game season between L.A. and Toronto where he uh, kind of had his worst season of his career, that 423, 4, or 0.423, 42.3%, whatever number you want to use, uh, quality start percentage, right about the middle of your screen right there in uh, 26 games played. That was his worst quality start percentage of his career. Now down at 32.3% for Jack Campbell this year. Here's the thing. Jack Campbell is giving you a quality start 32, less than 32.5% of the time when he starts those 31 games, and you have points in 71% of those games. So more than double the quality start rate for Jack Campbell. You are getting points. That is phenomenal, and that is where Wright is. I think the biggest thing for the Oilers here is Stuart Skinner is your starter going forward, right? I, th I think we can all agree with that. There is no doubt Jay Woodcroft has not outright said that, but Jay Woodcroft has also kind of outright 
implied that for us as Oilers fans. And I think it's pretty clear here there's a game that Jack Campbell will start against the Arizona Coyotes in the coming week. And then there is a game he will start against the Anaheim Ducks the week later. And that should be and likely will be Jack Campbell's last two starts of the season. Again, I give you Jack Campbell has two starts remaining if the Oilers are as serious about getting into first place as we think they are and be as serious about making the playoffs as we think they are. So I think just to say, put your mind to ease, Jack Campbell, based on last night's performance, won't be getting much of the net. I echo Patrick from the Oilers Fanatics uh, sentiment. In fact, hey, it would be a fantastic story to see Jack Campbell come in relief in the playoffs of Stuart Skinner and lead us to the Stanley Cup. That would be one of those Cinderella story things now for us. But reality says that Stuart Skinner moving forward pretty much no matter what is going to be our guy. But when you have a guy failing metrically in terms of save percentage and goals against as bad as Jack Campbell is and somehow some way the Edmonton Oilers get 71% of the points available to them in the games for Jack Campbell. That is pretty dang spiffy, if I don't say so myself. I think if you count the half points, I guess it would be kind of probably closer to 66, 68% somewhere in there. But still, for the Edmonton Oilers, friends, that is incredible that the Oilers have been able to pull off that. And obviously, too, how much is Jack Campbell's struggles actually do to the rest of the team? You see a night like last night where there's guys going out there and making plays that you probably can't make, right? I think I look back, the worst play I saw defensively from the Oilers last night was the goal against where Cody Ceci and Darnell Nurse have one man on a rush back into the zone pinned against the far side boards leaving the entire middle wide open and Evander Kane who had taken a penalty earlier in the game I believe is the forward having to cover back on that stretch of defense and the puck goes in the back of the net right you you can't afford that kind of stuff and obviously with a struggling goaltender you can't afford it that much more and for the Edmonton Oilers that's the kind of stuff that still happens and has happened all season in front of Jack Campbell I just want to large this so as my eyes can kind of read it a little bit more but you kind of look here we'll get rid of the uh, goalie point share here but you look at how this uh, kind of maps out here friends I'm just going to disappear behind this graphic is all the numbers across the board for Jack Campbell appear to be the worst of his career right Um, I think the quality start percentage the quality starts uh, the minutes aren't necessarily down but they're not great Uh, you look to the shutouts are down compared to everything except for a couple of years, that uh, 1920 season, I guess. Goals against average is way up. The save percentage is way down. Jack Campbell never having been before in a full NHL season, less than a 900% save percentage goalie. And obviously, too, you look at the goals against, it's going to outdo what he did in Toronto last year with that 123 based on goals against per game. But the big number is on the right-hand side of your screen, the goals saved above average, minus 21.1. And that is where I'm going to leave you on this is, do you really believe that Jack Campbell, at his stage of his career here after just signing your one of a deal with the Edmonton Oilers and at 31 years old, is completely cooked and out to the NHL next year? Because that's, that's kind of the only thing that that number tells me is either he's completely cooked can never play in the NHL again, either have to buy him out or send him to the minors to never be heard from again, or you have to do something to get him back into game shape. And I think that just happens naturally because is it, I I think it would be physically impossible, no way, no how, for Jack Campbell to be worse next year than he has been this year. So that's where I'm saying this is not a crapping on Jack Campbell video. This is actually a very hopeful, uh, insightful video on Jack Campbell. You know what? Having a career bad year, but is that going to define him or do we get better next year? And I think 100%, as bad as it's been this year, there is no way you can possibly get worse out of Jack Campbell next year. See what Matthias Ekholm does with Jack Campbell. See what Matthias Ekholm does with Jack Campbell in a diminished role with the Oilers. If you're paying $5 million for a backup, friends, we're paying 7 
and a half million dollars for our goaltending next year. Guess what? That is perfectly fine by me because there was a time we were paying seven and a half for Miko Koskinen and Mike Smith and everybody was losing their minds. Now the Oilers are a dominant team set to make the playoffs for the, what, third year in a row. And guess what? End of the day? Fourth year in a row. Sorry, this is fourth year. Yeah, this is fourth year. I lost track of time. But fourth year in a row. And you've got a goaltending duo that's getting you wins at a clip you haven't gotten wins in quite a while. That is fantastic if you don't ask me. So, friends, I'm up on Oda here. You have yourself a great night. You can hear by the English language use here. I'm getting pretty tired. It's been a late day. I am up on gone.